Well, water is absolutely critical to a ranching operation. If you don't have water, you don't have anything, and it's important to, to protect it and protect the riparian areas. And, you know, we have crib springs in places that we uh, draw on water for houses or uh, livestock, but uh, having that creek run down through the middle of the ranch is, uh, is incredibly valuable. Well, my name's Eric Butters. My family and I uh, operate a cattle ranch here on, near the Ghost River. Well, the creek spring fed uh, on the ranch. Uh, it runs a couple miles down into the Ghost River. It's called Robinson Creek. It's a source of water for livestock. We tend to try and keep the livestock away from the creek and, and pump water to troughs or haul water to troughs. So it's, uh, it's a very valuable part of the, of the ranch, but it's also, I, I think, a very beautiful part of it. And you get a lot of satisfaction out of having a picnic on the creek or just walking along or riding along or whatever. So it's a, it's a huge, huge lifestyle benefit for us to have that, that creek there. But I haven't noticed so, so many this last couple of years, but there's always been fish in the creek cutthroat trout, brook trout a little bit, and there's been a few bull trout around. But um, the, the last period of dry years, as, as you saw, it's not a big stream. You know, there's been, other, there's been ups and downs in the uh, population from what I can notice by riding by, you know, it's, it's very unscientific. Well, we're standing here on the edge of uh, what was once a cultivated field, which has now been planted back to, to grass. Uh, and the riparian area on the other side. And so we graze the uh, native, or the tame grass here at various times of the year, depending uh, when we need it and when it's appropriate to graze it. And we don't graze the riparian area. And as you can see, there's, there's a difference in foliage. Uh, you know, the, uh, the area down around the creek is made of uh, sedges and, and uh, grasses and willows and trees here and there. And they're vital to keeping the stream bank strong so that when a flood comes along, they don't wash it out. So that's sort of what I think is significant about this area is, is uh, keeping the stock away from the uh, riparian area. And with electric fences, relatively easy to do. Well, we, we, we hot wire off the creek year round now and it keeps the cows from grazing in the summertime if they're anywhere near in the summer and, and it keeps them from browsing off in the winter time by keeping them out of there, uh, you know, we're trying to do our part to protect the, the integrity of the stream and the quality of the water. In fact, um, here about three weeks ago, we had two and a half inches of rain in about an hour and a half one evening, and uh, the creek barely came up because all the area around the creek was so dry, it just soaked it up like a sponge, which is, of course, what's supposed to happen, you know, and. Uh, so, uh, you know, the riparian areas and the, you know, some of the muskeg and the other forest and land around and whatnot just soaks up that water and uh, uh, probably recharged the, uh, the aquifers a little bit, but uh, try and let a, a stream do what its job is. I mean, I, I recognize it's a struggle for, for people because there's not a whole whack of money to be made in the cow-calf business. So two things, you don't have a lot of money to spend on extravagant things, but uh, you know, if you sort of think your way through a little bit, you can do a lot of things without spending a lot of money. And there's, there's things that you can do uh, that, uh, uh, that, that help out and, and, and chip away at stuff. And you know, places where streams are degraded, um, they didn't degrade overnight. Uh, it's a long, slow process. If you get old photographs from a hundred years ago on a lot of the ranches and things look different now and suddenly it's, the, the change is so incremental, people don't notice it happening until maybe they look at the old photos and stuff like that. And, and, and you need to understand you're not going to repair anything overnight either. It, it incrementally was damaged perhaps uh, in some cases and you can incrementally repair it uh, without a great deal of cost. 
If you don't have healthy, you don't have water, you don't have anything. It's just satisfying to, to keep it as pristine as we can, to try and keep it in a natural landscape. Because really, cattle ranching is all about taking, uh, making use on a long-term basis, a sustainable basis, of playing the hand you're dealt. So it's, it's nice to play that hand in a manner such that it is uh, sustainable in the long run.